Yes, yes, yes. Shalom, Chabarim, shalom. This is Iadinos Ras Ayadonis. This is Yadin here, L-O-J, the Lion of Judah, Information Society of His Divine Majesty. So here, 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 this brief read here on the real Eve, or is Eve Yahweh? Some people think that Eve, Eve of the Hebrew Bible, of the first book of the Bible called Genesis, the Sefer Bereshith, Hebraically speaking, but some are going to be resurrecting or attempting to resurrect the ancient hearsay. As Hebrews 13 and 9 says, Be not carried about with divers, divers and strange doctrines. All right, some are going to be telling you about divers and strange doctrines, basically ancient heresies, right? And one of them that is on the rise is making believe making people believe that Eve, mentioned in the Hebrew scriptures, in the Hebrew Bible, that Eve is actually the Yahweh, that she's actually the Yahweh, right? And they're going to try to make their case based on the Hebrew. Now, most of these ones and ones are not really Hebrew speakers. They might be deep, deep ending on some worldly, like scholars or people out in the world that have, you know, academic accolades, scholarship, PhDs, so forth and so on, who in some of their theoretical, speculative or research papers have gone over this particular subject matter, looking at the name of Eve in the Hebrew, Chawa, right? The name of Eve in the Hebrew and the name of Hashem HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Holy One, blessed be He, the Yod He Wahe, Yod Ha Wahe, Yod Ha Wahe, look at the Hebrew letters. So this is just like kind of a heads up, and we also like to follow up is where did the worship of the mother and child come from? We're going to address that. Where did the mother and child worship come from? We already have basically gone over and pointed to points of references in the scripture and archaeology and even in ancient Mitzrayim, ancient Egypt and Kemet. But we have the groundation from Moshe. It says that Moshe, Moses was learning all the wisdom of the Egypts. Actually, it's the Egypts, upper and lower Egypts, and was mighty in word and in deed and revealed to us that Hebrew science right there. So the first thing first is that Eve in the Hebrew Bible is not Yahweh, Yahweh, some say Yahweh is not Jah, Jehovah is not Yahweh, it's not he who be who he be. I mean, that should be clear and evident and obvious, right, to you could say most ones and ones. That's clear and obvious to most of us. And especially if you read Hebrew, they're going to try to make the argument on some Hebrew and they don't really know Hebrew because if you did know Hebrew, you would know that that argument is at, at, at best pseudo. At worst, it is heretical. Right? It is like a heresy. And it's an ancient heresy that already had been addressed in previous times. Right? That is being, once again, in these latter days and times of the Gentiles, the nation states, and the resurrection of Kol Yisrael, the Beta Israel, especially we, the Beta Israel, the House of Israel over here in the Americas and the Caribbean. This is a diverse doctrine to sidetrack. Like lying prophets, right? The spirit, right, has been put into these lying prophets. You know, we have like the Ahab and Jezebel syndrome again. We're going through, not just Jezebel. People always like to talk about Jezebel, but it was Ahab. You got to remember, it's Ahab, Ahab, right? And his lying prophets, right? And his lying prophets. So here, 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 let's get into this right here, here, here. All right, so we're using this as a cover right here, right, just to speak of on the real Eve. Where should we begin? Let's first of all begin with the name in Hebrew, right, the name in Hebrew. Let's go right here. Here we have the name Hawa, 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 Hawaha, Hawaha, Hawaha. Now, when some say the name Yahweh, Hey, Yod, Hey, Wahe, they might say the name as Yahawaha. Some of the 17, 19, 70 AD, one West Israelites in those camps that come from the one West Israelites, the ISUPK, Israeli School of Universal Practical Knowledge, and the other, you know, groups and, and camps that come from that camp, GOCC, IUIC, many of them also may refer to that particular name, Yahawaha, Yahawaha. All right, so let's go through this right here. All right, we're going to touch on this. So here, 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 we have the, some say Yud, 
right? We see it as Yod, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey, Yod, Hey, Wow, Hey. Now, if one's no Hebrew, even just the basic Hebrew um, letters, basic Hebrew letters, you know there's a Ha and there's a Ha, Ha. There's a Ha sound and there's a Ha sound, right? There's the Ha and Ha, 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 right? The Ha and Ha. So this is, this is the key right here. And also the meaning. What is the meaning of the name, right? What is the meaning of the name? So briefly here, others say yod hey valve hey, right? yod hey wa hey, the Y-H-W-H. Now there's two H sounds in the Hebrew, right? This is another meme right there for, yeah, two H sounds in the Hebrew. There's two H sounds in the Hebrew. You can see it right here when we read it from right to left. There's the chet and there's the hey. There's the chet and the hey. The chet, 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 and the hey. They're not the same letter. And hawa, hawa, from the root of what hawa is different than hawa or hoa, hoa, and yahua, yahua. Right? Some, when they transliterate it as Jehovah, you remember that in German, the J sound is pronounced as a Y sound. And the V sound in German is pronounced as a W sound. So even when you look at Je Jehovah, it will be Yahoah, Yahoah, if you understood why the Germans and how the Germans use letters. So the J, even in the German translation, Jehovah, you know, going back to M Martin Luther and the German, the black German princes. All right. So here, 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 here's another right here. So here we have Chawa. You see the H there has a dot underneath. Some would dismiss that dot. Right? Well, we dismiss their heresy, right, and their diverse and strange doctrines as their own selfish fantasies, you know, selfish fantasies. They're bringing out their own kind of ideas, right, or their own desires and trying to superimpose and say, well, this is the real, even want to call it mystical or metaphysical. The fact is that the Basics. You can't get to the metaphysical. Let's say this right here. You can't get to the metaphysical, metaphysical, if you don't have the physical. You can't get to the heavenly things if you have in 360 ciphered the earthly things, right? So many want to go into the Hebrew, right, and assume that this is that, and because they're looking at this person's research or that person's research and haven't mastered or gained the 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 knowledge of the mastery of the basics for themselves. For themselves, they're deep ending on somebody else's scholarship, alleged pseudo scholarship. And even most of the scholars put this out as a theory, right? As a kind of a curiosity that here we have the name of Eve is Chawa, 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 Chawa. The other Yehudi, the other Jews, right? Ashkenazi, the other, because their mother tongue, they would say Chava, 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 right? With a V sound. Afro-Semitically speaking, right? The Afro-Semitically proper enunciation, Chawa, Chawa, right? And we can cross-reference even the Ethiopic, the, you know, the pure, we say like the Shemitic and the Afro-Semitic of the Royal Amharic. We, of the Royal Order of the Ethiopian Hebrews after the Order of Melchizedek, we, the Black Jews of the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. So here we have Chawa. From the H2331, Chawa, right? Life. Some say life giver because at the root is life. Like Chawa. It's like when we say Lachayim, Lachayim. We lift up the chalice. And we lift up that chalice and say Lachayim. Or ones lift up the cup, right? With the wine, the course. And they say Lachayim, Lachayim. It's like to life. Like to life for life, right? But actually, literally, Chayim means lives. But in the Hebrew sense, Right? It can be applied, it's like a plural singular, lachayim, lachayim, right? Lachayim, right? For lives, for liberty, as we would say, right? So here we have chawa. I want to see that clearly, chawa, right? Now we just use this as a placeholder, got to replace that picture there, right? But here we have the chayim, 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 right? Chayim, right? More properly, Put two Y's there would bring out the Garun, the glide of the Chaim, Chaim. And remember, it begins with a Chet, right? It begins with a Chet. Here we have life, Chaim. You see the first letter from the right-hand side? Chaim, Chaim, life. 
right? Chayin. It's a related research on the Yod right there. Here's the letter. Here's the letter that begins off Eve's name, right, in the Hebrew. Chet, 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 chet. And you know these ones don't know because they can't, these basics, the basic sounds, word sound. They don't have the Hebrew opening of the mouth. These ones that bring these strange and diverse doctrines. And are trying to say, well, this is what the Hebrews meant. And they want to say, well, the Hebrews took this from Egypt out of Kemet. And they don't even know either or very well. Linguistically, they haven't done the linguistic archaeology. This is one thing we can do. Even if we can't get to all the archaeological sites that are covered by the big governmental agencies and intergovernmental agencies, we can do the linguistic archaeology. It's very clear that Eve's name begins with the Chet and not with the He. This is the Hey, Hey. Hey, a uh, ha sound, and this is a ha 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 sound, right? So that's that's the big difference. Here we show it side by side. In Yahweh, right? Yahweh, Yahweh, right? In His name, or someone say Yahweh. See the confusion is when they say the Yahweh and they say Hawa, and then they see it in English is H A W W A H, and then they see Yahweh. Right, as some of the Hebrews and Israelites enunciate the Hashem, the name, Hakadosh Baruch Hu Baruch Hashem, they see that there, and then they see Chawa, Chawa, and because they don't know the phonetics, they're not reading, comprehending the phonetics. Like over here, just go to this right here for a moment. Over here, this is phonetically, where is it? This is phonetically pointed. Let's bring this out right here. I want to show you how this is phonetically pointed. Right over here, you can see this down here. Right, this is phonetically pointed. You see the, the dot underneath the H? That's phonetically pointed. So those who get the basic discipline. See, this is basic discipline, discipleship, basic discipline. You can't, we, we, we can't just, see, Hebraically, truly Hebraically, right? The mix-up comes up because they translate the Bible into English and everybody pick up the Bible and make up their own ideas. But they don't have the basic tools. They haven't been initiated. Right? They haven't been initiated. It's like the Ethiopian eunuch said when he says, my friend, do you understand what you read? He said, how can I unless some, some man guide me? They haven't been guided or they've been misguided, misdirected. So you see the H right there? You see the H right there? You see the H right there? Chawa. Let's bring this up right here. Yeah, there we go right there. Zooming out a little bit. Chawa, Chawa. That dot, right, is that emphatic, a guttural, the Chawa, right? What they leave out here, this is somewhat incomplete. At the end, there's an H. So it's having the H. It has the, what ones might say, the hard or the masculine, so to speak. The hard H, the chet at the beginning, and the hey, the soft the H sound at the end, chawa. But that dot underneath it, that diacritical mark, that dot underneath it, brings out, that distinguishes it from regular H. This is like special H, right? This is ha, not ha, not ha, yahawa. Yahawa, it's not Yahawa, Yahawa. That's not it. That is not it. Right? And the basics, ones and ones who understand basic Hebrew, right? Even basic from a basic Hebrew comprehension, you will over, you should understand. One would comprehend this. So Eve, right, is not Yahweh. Right? Eve is not Yahawa, is not Yahweh. Right? The name, the Hebrew is different. The Hebrew is distinct and different with these two names, with the name of the Ha Shem. Right? Then after all, if one even thinks that, okay, Eve is Jehovah, it is the Lord Yahweh, as they would say. And then you read the narrative. Notice what they're doing. They're picking this verse and that verse here, and they're saying, well, this really means that. And these other verses that preceded and follow it, you know, will contradict their strange and diverse doctrine philosophy. All right, so that's what we call it the Ahab and Jezebel syndrome, the lying prophet syndrome. You know, ones want to be all metaphysical, but their physical found their five cycle foundation is off. You know, first before we get into even the allegorical, you have to understand the peshat, the plane. Could we build the allegorical or the metaphysical based on a good understanding of the five cycles? Like when Robeno, Yeshua HaMoshiach. Our rabbi, the rabbi of rabbis, our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, when he said, if I show you earthly things, if you can't understand earthly things, the earthly things I show you, how are you going to understand the heavenly things? How are you going to understand the heavenly things? You can understand the things right in front of your face. The basic example, how are you going to understand the next level? In other words, if you're not good in 
M multiplication. If you're not good in adding, subtracting, multiplication, division, the basics of it, how are you going to do well in algebra? You remember in school, first you had to have, have like, say, algebra. You had to have, be good in your basics of the basic math. The basic math, adding, subtracting, uh, multiplication, division, you know, those basic things of math. And then you move up to the next level of math. And that next level of math is like algebra. And you can't be good at ge uh, geometry. In fact, in some schools, in any school that has discipline, even if you want to get into geometry, you love geometry, you have to strengthen this prerequisites. There's prerequisites. So what they're doing is confusing a lot of people. This, that's a lying spirit. They have a purpose. Those lying spirits out there are going to be lying to you saying that Eve is Yahweh, Eve is Jehovah, Eve is the Lord. You know, like Eve is God, really. And then they'll go into this worship of the mother, try to mix up the worship of the mother and the child, which is the ancient worship of the mother and child that we have in so many different nations. Right, it's all explainable, and we're going to explain that from the scripture and from archaeology and other spiritualities. But we're going to show you how the root of it is in Moshe's first book, right? The Sefer Bereishith, right? Bereishith, right? I know some want to see, well, where is the divine feminine? We've already gone through the divine feminine in the Reishith and Bereishith, the Hokma, Hokma, wisdom, 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 right? Who precedes Eve. See, what they're looking at is some Gnostics. They're looking at some Gnostic stuff. We know exactly what they're looking at because we've already been there right, more than a decade, two, two, three decades ago. We've been through those basics of it. Now, some of the Gnostic writings are written by those who are Yehudi, faithful, and those who are Meshachawi on the Nazarenes. But there are some Gnostic, we call them pseudo-Gnostics, so the Bible calls it science falsely so-called. Gnosis pseudonymos. We'll bring that out as well. But right here, suffice it to say, here is we're getting down to the root of the Hashem. What we just explain right there is just basics. Right? The Hebrew letters in the name at the root word of Eve, Hawa, Hawa, right? And in Yahweh, right, are not the same. The meanings are not even the same as well. Right? The meanings are not even the same. All right, so let's note that right there, but we will point and follow up with the worship of the mother, the ancient worship. Where does the ancient, the ancient worship of the mother and child, that all was a byproduct of the fall, right? What's called the fall, or we say the Gan Ba'edin, what happened in the Garden of Pleasures, the Garden of Delights, the Garden of Eden, right? And the consequence right for the knowledge eating of the fruit you know the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil it is the adverse consequence right for that disobedience and we're going to get into the details of that and we have the root in what Moshe Moses as we have in the Brit Kadasha Moses was learned in all the wisdom, all the wisdom of the Egypts. Most people say Egypt, but really it's the Egypts. This is studying the Hebrew and getting to the root and doing the studies. Not just Egypt, but it's the Egypts. Upper, right? Upper and lower Egypt. See, most ones, even when they're into Egyptology today, they only are familiar really with lower Egypt. Upper Egypt is the Ethiopian connection. And what do we rep? What do we represent? The royal order of the Ethiopian Hebrews. Right after the order of Maliki Zedek, we the black Jews of the lion of the tribe of Judah, we the beta Israel over here in these here Americas and the Caribbean, LOJ, the lion of Judah society. So, here, 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 we're gonna get into more on this right here, but just a kind of a warning, 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 right? Watch out, right, for those what is called the devil's philosophy. Give us the teaching of his magic because we don't want no devil's philosophy. Chawa is Chawa and Yahuwah is Yahuwah. Chawa is Chawa, the creature, and Yahuwah right, is the creator. Ha Elohim, the true good, the true God, the powers, he who be who he be. Who created in she, not in Eve, not in Eve, but in Chokmah, Chokmah. See, what they don't, what they lack really is chokmah. Remember, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, right, was just a tree of knowledge, not wisdom. It's because the woman who even, even in the narrative, she admits that she was beguiled and tricked. 
right? And when Yahweh, right, the Elohim came to her and to Adam to ask, well, what had happened? If she is Yahweh, if she is according to their heretical, right, hearsay, heresy, then she was talking to herself. The, the whole narrative doesn't make any sense. They're bringing in, you know, strange and foreign ideas. And you see, this is exactly what happened to the Israelites. Because many of these ones who are doing this, you know, would more or less, you know, have say they were or they are or maybe they sometimes are Israelites. They, they'll say they're everything. They're a little Israel. They're a little bit Egypt. They're a little bit African. They're a little bit this, a little bit that. See, this is where the confusion comes in. This shows that they're not really in a covenant. They're not in a faithful right, relationship. It's all about relationship. It's like the Israelites, what they did with Moshe and with Aharon and with the molten, the molten calf that's falsely called the golden calf. Nowhere in the scripture does it call it the golden calf. Right? That's only because of the counterfeit Christianity that they put this, they superimpose the idea of the Bible. Even the translation says the molten calf. But the same thing they did right there. They came into the covenant, right? But as a dog returns to its vomit, and even the pig, after it is washed, after she is washed, she returns to wallowing in the mud. And the dog, what's up, dog? The dog returns to the vomit. You know, the dog spit out the vomit and goes back to it. So even though people so-called become Hebrews and Israelites, right? Because, you know, because of the, you could say, you know, the confusion, you know, that's in them. You know what I mean? Because of the confusion that's in them, they return back to their ways and then they try to contradict, you know, the truth and bring in all these heretical ideas. This is what the Israelites did. The Israelites saw other people and maybe some of the other people were Afro-Shemitic speakers and they spoke, talked about Elohim, right? And they thought that the other people's power, right, is our power, right? Their power is not our power. Right? To say their, their gods is not our true good, true God. See? You, you cite that right there. And this is what caused Ha'adon, right? This is what caused the Lord to drive them out. And now after that, right? After Adam, in a sense, through his disobedience, he, he, he feminized. He fell from his godlikeness and so did she. Notice this, that Eve said, I have gotten a man from the Lord, from Yahweh. Note that after they were kicked out and after he knew, right, he had the knowledge, remember, knowledge of good and evil, right? But what's the first thing we see? We see the evil of Cain. And what does Robeno Yeshua, what does Jesus Christ say? He says, ye y'all are of your father, right? You know, he was a murderer from the beginning. Right from the beginning. So according to the beginning means Bereshit. Bereshit. That's the name in Hebrew of the first book of the Bible. So when we go to the beginning, the first book of the Bible, who was the first murderer? It was Cain. It was Cain. It was it was Cain, right? And what did Hawa, the one who is so wise, according to these liars, the people possessed by lying spirits, she was so wise, she said she's gotten a man of the Lord and that was the first murderer according to Robeno Yeshua HaMoshiach. So you can't hold to your heretical ideas and then say, well, you still have faith in Yeshua and, and in, and in the, the covenant and in the truth of the scripture because you are espousing lies and philosophies and strange doctrine. This is exactly what Revelation says about Jezebel. You suffer that woman that Calls herself a prophet to teach and seduce my people. That is what it says right there, there, there. And this is what we're saying right here that Hawa, right? So who drove them from the garden? Right? It was not Yahweh Elohim. Who drove them? See, they wanted to say Elohim apart over here and then they want to try to split things and confuse you. But who drove them from the garden? Eve drove them from the garden? <laughs> or who drove them from the garden? So Eve's name does have as its root life, but with Yahweh, right, at the root of his name is to be, to become, right, to, to manifest, to, to exist, right, to be, to become, to manifest, to exist. And we're going to get into a little bit more of that right here. This is a good overview, a kind of a breakdown, right? Stay tuned, stay tuned. Shalom, Chabarim. Shalom. This is Wendem Yadin. This is Yadin right here, L O J.
Yes, sir. Rasta Fry. Check us out on the podcast. Podcast as well. Heal up also the priest Isaac and to the brothers and sisters and give thanks for the donation, the prayers, the contribution to this ministry right here, here, here. Yes, brothers and sisters. Shalom, Chabarim. Yeshua Shalom.